Hi, Sarah here from Sarah Humphrey Embroidery and I've got another um, book that I want to show you, one of my favourite books off my shelves um, and if you're a needlework person you are going to love this one so do stick around um, so don't forget to check out our other books as well I've covered some more off my shelves that I really love that I wanted to show you um, so do check those out and if you like this series let me know in the comments below so this is the book that I want to show you. So this is the Needlework Collection of Mikhail and Elizabeth Feller. Um, they collected um, lots of old um, embroideries together, um, covering sort of the 300 years um, of time period. And they have um, two books in their collection. This is the first one. I don't have the second one, unfortunately, but this is the first. Um, and they actually had an exhibition of this work at the Ashmolean Museum in Oxford. So I actually got to see all of these and they were wonderful. So I want to show you a little bit of this book um, so you can see why I love it so much. So let's delve inside. So what's really good about this book right at the beginning is the index um, is pictorial, <laughs> it's got pictures of everything that's in the book so you can have a really quick flick through and see which one you fancy and go straight to the page which is wonderful because it's a very visual book and you know you can recognise the pieces quite instantly so I love this index, I think this is fabulous and it's every piece that's in there and some of the pieces have more close-up views as well the photography in here is excellent so if you want to study embroidery and you're interested in how people used to make things this is great, you really can get close enough to have a look and see how they made things so I love this index, everything. So I'm going to start, right, so we start at the beginning, good place to start. So we've got Adam and Eve, um, and I want to show you what that's from. So this is the piece, now this is really interesting piece of embroidery. Um, it's early to mid 17th century, so beginning of the 16 to mid 1600s, um, and it's not actually finished, which is what I think is really interesting, because then you can see the process behind the piece. So it was meant to be a book cover, so you can see the spine here, and the images on the front and the back are actually the same image um, but it's not finished and the more you look at it the more incomplete you can see it is um, so Adam and Eve have not been stitched and you can see they started to do the background here in a really dark colour so this would have looked quite different but they only got this far with it um, so this is um, tent stitch so all you needle pointers will be very familiar with this stitch so the whole thing is stitched in the tent stitch um, it is half a metre long, 33 centimetres high, and there's an awful lot of detail in it. And it doesn't actually say in the book uh, much about the processes and how big this, um, how big the stitches were. So we've done a little bit of calculation <laughs> and it is a rough guess, this um, worked out from the height that we know it is, and we scaled it down. So this little monkey here, we've worked out that he is about 36 stitches to the inch. Now that's pretty small in, in anyone's um, in anyone's book, but bearing in mind this was made mid 17th century, so there was no electric light, there were no magnifying glasses, there was none of that um, aids to help them with it. Um, so tiny, tiny stitching on on this linen, um, and really it's not surprising it wasn't finished when you realise how small the details are. Um, so tiny, tiny, so 36 stitches roughly to the inch. Um, and you can also see, we can't see so clearly from this, so if I just go back a page, you can see the outline that they drew on. So you can see the process that they used to stitch it. Um, so they stitched the elements at the front first and then they filled in the background afterwards, which is pretty normal for that technique. You want to make nice shapes and nice edges um, with the elements that are at the front and then you fill in around it afterwards. And you can see the drawing of Eve here. She looks a little bit scary <laughs> um, but yeah just just a, an outline drawing for her so there were no shading marks on it so they would have done all that by by eye as, as well which I think is really interesting so this is a really beautiful piece um, and just interesting to see it part worked and to see how they approached it and to do all that work and then not finish it as well is a real shame but great for us because we can explore this piece in detail. So 
So it's got loads of pieces like that, um, very similar. But this one's interesting because it's got some different stitches in it. So that one was all tent stitch. This one has got some other stitches. So it's got vertical brick kind of stitch in it. It's actually got some cross stitches in it as well. And this is also mid to late 17th century. Um, so interesting to see a similar subject, lots of biblical subjects, um, but done with some extra stitches in it as well. There's almost a little bit of a satin sort of shading kind of stitch in here as well um, and in the leaves at the top here and some needlepoint and then this brick filling which is quite unusual so it's really interesting to look at these and see that they did use some different stitches there's another one sacrifice of isaac um, this is really interesting i've not seen this before because this is needlepoint in the background so this is tent stitch um, on a linen but the faces look really different so the faces have actually been applied so it says applied uh, so that's silk for the stitching I'm in a PK section of plain weave silk fabric so they've cut these little faces out and they've stitched them on top of the linen and done needlepoint in the background so quite unusual two techniques to put together at this point so this is 17th century again um, and the <laughs> little faces look quite quite strange actually, they look a little bit out of place but really interesting to see that technique come in. So loads of pieces like this, they're absolutely beautiful, the detail in them is stunning and the pictures are great, you can really see up close with these. And what was interesting about this one that I've marked is um, it's got gold work in it as well. So there is some shading here, you can see the faces are just shaded in silk but this would have all been gold this would have all glittered these little dots that you can see would have been spangles so this gold work version of a sequin so the whole thing would have glittered and, and shone um, and it's all tarnished now so it's gone a bit brown and a bit black um, but if you imagine those bits being gold and how that would have looked it was absolutely stunning Something a little bit different, this one's really interesting, never seen anything quite like this. If you're a fan of white work um, and needlepoint lace, um, not my favourite subject it has to be said, but when done like this it's, it's absolutely stunning. So the whole thing is in white, it's got pearls on it as well and there are beads as well in the eyes of the people here. But it's making a lace out of um, a needle and thread, so you put a thread across and you work a buttonhole stitch around the thread and there's different patterns that you can do with that so you actually make a piece of fabric with it if you like I and mean, you can see that here so you can see the dress this has sort of been made in pieces and applied over the top of something underneath and then you can make these bars as well to connect things together so lots of different techniques within this needleless technique but they've just done this whole panel in it which is it's just amazing and these beautiful pearls on her dress and quite a strange little baby here with with mad hair <laughs> and staring eyes um, but when you consider the whole thing's white so you have to use the um, the patterns and the textures to help you say what you want to say because you can't change colour in this so really unusual piece this is mid 17th century as well and only 18 centimetres wide so it's probably about that size I would say actually that's probably to scale and when you imagine that that's even the work involved is you know it, it was tiny in those days absolutely tiny and it's quite awe inspiring to think that when I know how long things take now and to see what they were making in the conditions they were making them in as well so I really love that that piece I think there's some yeah there's some more close-ups over here and all these lovely little pearls in the gaps beautiful they would have cost quite a lot they'll be real pearls and it's full of real pearls so um quite a cost to that one as well and the little figures and some three-dimensional shapes are made separately and applied on afterwards somebody here hanging upside down <laughs> i've only just noticed him a baby hanging upside down So here's another one just to show some interesting techniques. So again, the same subject, but I love how they interpret them. So um, we've got more needlepoint here, but this has been made separately. can't necessarily see it very clearly, but it's been made separately and actually folded like a curtain and applied down onto the fabric. So it's got three-dimensional form. And then this little chappy here is sitting inside this tented 
piece here and he's actually holding something which comes over the top of the curtain so he's got a little hand so this is a little wire wrapped hand um, and he's actually holding something and that comes on top again so there's loads of layers to this it's really amazing and lots of techniques as well there's some silk work in here there's a needle point um, he's got some little needle point stockings and clothing so these would be um, what we would call a slip so you make it separately and you stuff it and then you apply it on afterwards which gives him his shape and some mad things going on for the hair and some pearls for their jewels um, just so many different techniques going on and just to look at the pattern alone in this curtain um, the amount of work is, is stunning and then this of course is the whole piece that's just this section but there's all of this as well all these are little exotic animals and there's so much to look at in these pieces you can literally look at them for hours here's another one with some really interesting techniques in it um, now this one I'll show you another one over the page as well but I love this I've not really seen this in this um, as much of this in a piece before so it's got some um, needle point here so this has been made separately and attached on as has the little angel here the little cherub and you can tell that because it's got stitching around the edge and that's been stitched over so it's covering the edge that would be cut um, so that's been applied on and the wings as well and then this sort of sort of big wreath that goes around it now in here there's two different techniques that I want to point out so this is um, they call it parchment so whether that's a paper or something more I'm not too sure but it's been wrapped in a silk thread and then they fold that in half and then they've attached that down and they've made this sort of wreath all the way around the edge I'll have a look at the next one over the page because you can see it a little bit better and then in there there's this kind of coiled wire so that would have also been wrapped in a silk thread um, and that's been bent over and that's been stitched down as well so really three-dimensional effects going on here and a lot of work you're wrapping everything <laughs> Um, all of this has been wrapped and the amount of work is stunning and here's some more of this wrapped um, wire as well this coiled wire that's been wrapped in the silk all over it here and that bit that whole bit there is just that little bit here and it goes all the way around here as well you can see it here as well coming up here so this is a good image of it um, this parchment wrapped in the silk coiled over to make a sort of a leaf shape um, and stitched all around this border and it's really interesting to look at these old pieces and look at these techniques you can work them out from just looking and studying the pictures um, and to have a go at something that's not necessarily used so much anymore or might be a bit forgotten you know how did they used to do things and to bring them back into modern pieces is really interesting idea I think Now I wanted to show you this one because this piece belonged to Princess Margaret um, and this is a casket. Um, it's not a casket as we might know it today. It's a box um, that young ladies had to keep their hairbrushes and their special things in and they often had a secret drawer in them and secret compartments and they'd embroider all the panels and then the panels would go to cabinet maker, casket maker and he would cover the wood in the embroidery and make the box up and they would get the box back so in a way it's like a first ever kit very very early embroidery kit um, and she didn't princess margaret didn't make this one but she owned this one um, and you can see lovely detail of it here it's got a really unusual sort of gold lace around around the edge covering the edge of the embroidery there which is quite interesting not seen that too many times and you can see that all the way around the edge so every panel is covered in embroidery and the back as well in lots of different biblical scenes usually and then you can just see it inside here with the little compartments and things would lift out and there'd be secret drawers and all sorts in there so um, a real treasure for every young lady who was able to own one of these Now what I really love about these embroideries is the animals. I am an animal lover. I love stitching animals and I just love animals in general. And this one has got tons of animals on it and they're just so cute and they're quite cartoon-like. And this little horse down here is wonderful. He's got, he's got a little smiley face and he's sort of some silk 
work I think with some braid over the top a little needle point um, saddle on him there and um, you know really uh, lots of different techniques just to make this one little detail and we've got a squirrel up in the tree there's dogs um, there's a pig down here it's a camel over here um, and I love this if you wanted to take inspiration from something just do a little bit of it um, these animals are really beautiful I love the animals most of all They've got other things in the collection as well, so not just the biblical pictures. Um, so this is um, a forehead cloth, they would call it, and they would wrap this around their head because um, in those days people would wear headwear a lot more than we do now. Um, and this one is uh, lots of gold in it. So this is really interesting, these braid stitches. These are very old stitches um, from this period so this is 17th century still um, and they're quite complex they're not so common to do nowadays um, but you can still learn about these stitches and the whole thing would be covered with this braid stitches and this isn't something they would wear out this is something they would wear around the house and it's got all of this work in it so um, I love that they they um, spent so much time working on something that would have just been worn around the house different things here this is wonderful this is a gaming purse so this is a nice purse to keep your coins in um, lots of gold work on this as well so the unicorn here and the crown all in gold it's got a drawstring as well this would be drawn up and satin and silk inside to keep your coins in and when you think what we use now to keep our coins in I think I like one of these myself So loads of different things in the collection it really is wonderful and inspiring and I just love these I just wanted to show you these two faces because these are from the middle of this now does it say how big this is it doesn't but these are just the faces two of the faces from the center so we've got all of this gold work around the edge and these beautifully stitched faces are really wonderful the detail in these is absolutely fabulous and the clothes as well the drapery in the clothes and again pearls around the gold but the face is particularly absolutely stunning faces right at the back of the book um, there's some samplers um, I always love a good sampler so I'll just flick through these quickly so lots of different kind of samplers, band samplers where you'd make a band of stitch and put another one underneath. And they were to practice the stitches, that was the point, but um, they do make beautiful pieces in their own right um, and a great way for you to have a go at embroidery if you want to and to learn some new stitches to make a sampler of them. We've got some beautiful ones, I'll just flick through. And you can get little motifs and get some ideas for your pieces as well, so really inspirational to your own work to look at this one just again lots of these lovely little animals that I love so much and these are them in detail they would often practice their lettering on here and they're usually dated as well 1693 this one here's some more of this white work technique that we looked at earlier so the needle lace and a hole this is 89 centimetres long, so best part of a metre. The time they must have spent on these is just, just phenomenal. So let's jump to this one. Right, I wanted to show you this one. This is 1687. Signed Dorothy Ward is her name up here. And the dates, um, and this is all of the sampler that she did. So this is 84 centimeters long. And what's fantastic about this is, if you want to stitch it, you can in the cover of this. Just going to flip that back. Hopefully, you can see this. So if you take the dust jacket off and you open it out, it's got a pattern for Dorothy Ward sampler and it tells you what colours to use, um, the size it will come out depending on what fabric you use it on. So the whole dust jacket is is the um, is the chart to work Dorothy's sampler. So I think that's a really lovely touch if you wanted to have a go at one yourself. And then in the back are some of the designs of the animals. Now there would have been pattern books in those days and you would have flicked through and you would have got your... Um, 
your deer from your pattern book and you would have put that into your design and a lot of them were used um, to make the actual embroideries with so they would have been ripped out the book or they would have been copied on and got a bit ragged so a lot of those books don't exist anymore so somebody in here has copied um, lots of the designs from the book and you can use them yourself so it's fantastic to sort of have this collection but make it usable as well and make it a good learning resource if you want to um, and you can have a go with these patterns and just to show you don't need to do the whole panel that would take hours and hours you can just do little bits of it and make up your own designs so really wonderful and there's some of the counter patterns as well in the back So I love this book for lots of reasons. Um, I love the historical aspect and really getting into the pieces and having a really close look and seeing how they made things. It's easy to have a go yourself, get some wire and wrap it with some thread and see what happens. You can get really creative by following what they used to do. And it's got the patterns in it as well that you can use um, and stunning photographs, which really is a wonderful book. Um, if you are interested in having a copy of this, um, it's not currently in print. It's quite hard to find, um, hence I've only got one and not the second one as well. But we will leave all the details below and if you want to go and have a look for it, um, I hope you find a bargain and you manage to get it. Because um, at the time of making it's quite hard to get, um, to get this book, um, but we will leave all the details below of that. So I hope you've enjoyed this little look into another book from my shelf that I really love and you can see why I love this. Do check out the other ones and all our other videos as well. We've got loads and well over 200 videos now. You can check them all out here and don't forget to look at our website too. We've got lots of embroidery goodies for sale. You can see that link below.